Hello, my name is Dr. Arvind. I am a consultant in pediatrics and pediatric intensive care unit at Astor Whitefield Hospital in Bangalore. Let's talk about dengue fever in children today. Dengue fever is a seasonal viral illness spread by the female Aedes mosquito and caused by four different types of dengue viruses. The Aedes mosquito is a smallish black mosquito with white stripes over its abdomen and legs and sometimes it's called the tiger mosquito. It is a daytime feeder and prefers to bite early in the mornings and in the evenings before dusk. It hides indoors in the insides of cupboards, shelves, under the furniture, on dark colored clothing or other dark cool areas. The Aedes mosquito breeds in stagnant water, particularly if the water has been stagnant for more than one week. Dinghy fever does not spread from person to person. It is spread only through the bite of an Aedes mosquito. Once an infected person is bitten, the mosquito then transmits this disease to another person through bites. The virus may be detected up to seven days in an infected person and it is during this phase that the person is infectious to others. Let's talk about the symptoms of dengue fever. Most dengue fevers are mild in nature and are recognized by a sudden onset of high grade fever which may be up to 105 degree Fahrenheit. In small infants though, the temperature may be quite low, as low as 96.3 degree Fahrenheit. This is what is called as hypothermia. The other common symptoms of dengue include body aches and pains, pain behind the eyes, rash, swollen glands, nausea and vomiting. In small infants, excessive sleepiness, irritability may be symptoms of mild dengue. Dengue is very difficult to identify in small infants because the symptoms are common in nature with other common childhood infections. Hence, a high degree of suspicion is required to diagnose dengue fever in children and especially in small infants. Coming to the treatment, for most symptoms of dengue, home-based management is sufficient including fever control and management of symptoms. For more severe forms of dengue, hospitalization may be required. Dengue fever typically has fever for about five to seven days, though in some children, fever may subside in three to four days only to recur later. It is important to note that once fever goes away, a few children may go into what is called as the critical phase of dengue with resultant complications. It is important to be vigilant for recognizing signs of severe dengue. This may be persistent vomiting, severe headaches, difficulty in breathing or rapid breathing, or dehydration. Dehydration in infants may be recognized by dry lips, mouth or throat, lack of tears, a cool dry skin, or reduced frequency of urination or passing dark colored urine. Any such symptom should warrant a visit to the doctor and one should get the infant or the child checked out and may need blood tests as well at this stage to diagnose or rule out dengue fever. Dengue fever is uh, best prevented by both indoor and outdoor measures. Indoor measures include personal and household protection. These may include wearing long sleeves and long pants for children, especially during the bite times, which are early in the mornings and in the evenings before dusk. Use of mosquito repellent creams or sprays. One must be careful when using mosquito repellent sprays or creams in infants less than three months of age. And one must always read the instructions on the label before their use. If one is using mosquito repellent sprays, it must be in a well-ventilated room and should avoid areas such as the face, eyes, mouth and hands, as children often tend to take their hands into their mouth thus risking ingestion of the mosquito repellent sprays. Mosquito nets or barrier techniques are best for preventing entry of mosquitoes into the household and thereby also helping to prevent spread of dengue. The Aedes mosquito, as we mentioned earlier, breeds in stagnant water. So it is important to prevent uh, sources of stagnant water, both indoors and outdoors. Indoor sources may be flower vases or flower pots, 
outdoor sources may be water tanks, potholes, empty coconut shells or rainwater which is collected in puddles. If the water is stagnant for more than one week, there are high chances that the Aedes mosquito will breed and multiply in that stagnant water. It is also important to note that solid waste management within and outside the household is also an equally important measure for control of dengue fever. Finally, if any of the severe symptoms of dengue are recognized, it is important to approach a doctor and get the baby or the child checked and may require blood tests to confirm the presence of dengue fever and appropriate treatment as required. We at Astor Whitefield Hospital run a 24 by 7 pediatric emergency and you are most welcome to visit and get your child checked out for any suspicion of fever including dengue fever. Thank you for watching this video.